Welcome, everybody, to the Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. Today is our backlash prediction. Steve, are you ready for the most glorified house show in the history of San Juan, Puerto Rico? Yeah, buddy, let's just get right into this and, and knock it out. Dude, it's been 15 years since the WWE has been in Puerto Rico, and the Puerto Ricans have been waiting anxiously to see the world title defended. And instead, they're going to be getting the match that everybody has been waiting for once in a lifetime. The match that honestly is going to outdo The Rock and John Cena in terms of uniqueness, star power, and that is Seth freaking Rollins versus Omos. So, Steve, we could start off with that. I mean, before your prediction, um, this match is weird. The way it went is announced. The way it just, hey, by the way, it's happening next week. <laughs> That's basically the build. Well, I'll tell you right now, Santi. I've got uh, two words for you. Logan Paul. Yeah. Logan Paul's booked at a build out of Puerto Rico. He's got that those Puerto Rican ties. Listen, th- th- this match is just built around Seth and Logan continuing their feud. Uh, no disrespect to Omos and MVP because we could see a, a minor return of the Hurt Business because they have been re- like teasing it for many months now um, and they haven't really pulled the trigger. But all I'm saying is Logan Paul. Yeah, it's- yeah. I, I mean, it's one of those matches where honestly, like if you kind of think about it, um, the, the, it's most likely going to be a disqualification of some sort or shenanigans of sh- some sh- uh, sh- some short of some short, uh, of some sort, Jesus, dude, it's morning guys. All right. We usually don't record in the morning. We usually record in the evening. All right. Leave me alone. Um, of some sort, uh, whether it's a disqualification or somebody running in, um, because I don't think that either of these guys can afford a loss from one another, uh, with Seth Rollins being booked right to the top of the card and Omar being booked as this lucrative free agent um that can that that is, that is going to be a roadblock for anybody like you need to make him be a monster right losing to Brock Lesnar is one thing but losing to a guy one tenth the size like Seth freaking Rollins clean would just completely demolish the the aura of Omos I got a some sort of shenanigans, but I got Seth Rollins somehow winning. I don't know. Yeah, it's- I think I had Seth Rollins uh, by disqualification. That's, I think, what I put on my predictions the other day. Um, I don't see, like you said, both guys don't can't afford a loss. Um, Omos is being billed as the next, like, Andre or next big show, and he's really, like, trying to carry that persona or manif- manifest something out of himself. Um, and Seth pretty much guaranteed to be in the world title picture um come uh saudi arabia so i got seth by dq okay uh let's move on to the united states championship triple threat match between champion austin theory bobby lashley bobby who and bronson reed uh this is this is why the draft was terrible to do before the show <laughs> Exactly. Because we know Bronson Reed literally cannot win this. No. So why is he in here? If he wins this, that'd be kind of shocking. It'd be a neat little shock and surprise because you do have a pay-per-view in three weeks where you can take it to the title off of him and put it on SmackDown somehow. Um, but I just don't see it happening. And this is why you, they shouldn't have done the 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 draft so close to Backlash. Um, off the cuff, Steve, who you got? I have Austin Theory for the exact reason that you just mentioned. Um, Okay, Bobby Lashley could win, even though they're both on the same brand. But I don't see it for Bobby because I think they're going to push Bobby as a top guy going against Roman because there's not many guys on SmackDown that right now are at that echelon to kind of push them towards Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley is a ex world champion. He's a staple in the locker room and people can get around a Bobby Lashley Roman feud. Bronson Reed is on raw. They're not going to put both mid card titles on raw, even though that they have a pay-per-view in a couple of weeks night of champions. I still don't see it. It would be a pointless three week feud just to give the title back to theory. You know what I mean? No, I, I'm with you. Uh, I see Theory again winning via some sort of shenanigans, whether it's like Bronson Reed and Bobby Lashley take each other out and he somehow comes in with a sneaky heel pin. Um, but yeah, I've got Austin Theory winning as well. If you want some real just st- st- 
stupidness because of this draft. Let's go look at the Raw Women's Championship match between SmackDown superstar Bianca Belair and SmackDown superstar Io Sky. Uh, stupid. 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 Uh, this is dumb. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those where I'm like, why did you do the draft before? This doesn't make any sense. It, honestly, I think the biggest question that this leads to is how are you going to get the raw title over to, uh, excuse yeah, the raw title back to raw. And I think it is going to be something to do at Night of Champions. And this is what I meant at the beginning, right? This feels like a glorified pay-per-view because you have Night of Champions so close to, to this pay-per-view and you had the draft right before this. It almost feels like the draft is more so supposed to be this big impact for Night of Champions as opposed to this tonight, uh, uh, this at Backlash, because we've got these weird scenarios where I bet you neither of these two thought that they were going to be on SmackDown a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've got Bianca Belair. Like, it just doesn't make sense for her to lose the, as much as I adore Io Sky. It, this would just be weird for her to drop it to another SmackDown superstar. Yeah. So first off, nobody, these two women are going to put on a fantastic match, um, take nothing away from them. And, but you never really think EO sky as a women's champion at this moment in her career. But you said something's going to happen with the titles at night of champions. I'm going to wait to right to Monday night raw because that's when the, uh, the draft is finalized and we're going to have that awkward changeover between the two champions handing each other uh, circa Charlotte and Becky. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at least I believe these women are going to actually do business. I'm like, yeah, happens. you know what? I, th th you just said it, right? That's why I don't think they're going to do it that way. I think the WWE probably still has a sour taste in their mouth with how that went last time and how, you know, one didn't do business and it really diminished the other one's title reign because it just got tossed on the ground as garbage. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I were the WWE, I wouldn't want to do it again like that. I'd wait till Night of Champions to... I don't know, do a more proper transition. Either way, this is weird. This is stupid. And this is why you shouldn't have done the draft. For literally finalizing like two days before uh, before yeah. this pay-per-view. Are we both under the consensus it's Bianca Belair? It just doesn't make sense for him to not be Bianca Belair. It just, it'd, yeah. be, it'd just be weird. It'd be like her losing a, her title at a house show. Kind of like basically how Jinder Mahal pretty much did. Anyways. <laughs> Let's go into let's stay, let's stay on the women's uh, hometown girl Selena Vega versus and I'm a, it's a Puerto Rican show okay I can put on the Latino accent uh, versus SmackDown Women's Champion uh, who's a Raw superstar uh, Rhea Ripley again shenanigans caused by the draft we've got the Raw uh, the women's the SmackDown Women's Champion on Raw defending against a SmackDown superstar. There's intrigue here because of that. They actually, I don't know if they did it on purpose, but the intrigue is there for me because I normally under most circumstances would have thought Selena Vega has 0% chance of winning. But now to do some Scott Steiner math, I really think that she has a 33 and a third percent chance of winning this simply because she's on SmackDown. Yeah, and I get that, and I thought of that as well. But looking at the run that the Latino World Order has been having, they haven't even gotten what a run? <laughs> they, yeah, nothing exactly. but tripping and falling down a hill. Exactly. So they haven't picked up a win, any of them. Uh, oh wait, Santos picked up one like three weeks ago, but they haven't picked up a win together. So that goes against them. Rhea is smoking hot right now with the Judgment Day, and the Judgment Day is just showing dominance. I think once everything's split with the tag titles, we're gonna see Judgment Day somehow with tag titles and potentially Finn with the world title. They might make a super faction with the Judgment Day because they have been doing such good work. Rhea Ripley is not losing this title in Puerto Rico. I have then also said again, it is going to be shenanigans. Um, I do believe Judgment Day does get involved. Dom gets involved. Um, maybe he might even get ejected, but come back. Um, but I've, it's Rhea Ripley, man, because I think she's just an awesome talent. Uh, it's it's Rhea. Yeah, I've got Rhea as well, but I do anticipate um, for there at some point or another, uh, the only member of the Judgment Day that's slimy enough to get in there and maybe get physical versus another female is is Dom, right? He's the only one, and man, the, the heat would be nuclear if oh. he actually prevents Selena Vega from winning this in, in, uh, in Puerto Rico. That would be crazy. His hey, heat is already nuclear. Just remember what he did to his sister at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, he got from that was amazing. This boy can't talk. 
like <laughs> honestly like i honestly thought at first they were pumping in sound and then i realized no these people genuinely hate him and i went off on my stream the other week saying this is good heat this is not baron corbin go away heat this is true you are doing a fant- fantastic job and we are acknowledging that true heel heat and i want more of it i love it yeah, I think it's going to be, I mean, uh, Puerto Rico is the place known as the place that almost murdered Ric Flair from yes. the amount of heat <laughs> that he once generated. So uh, I don't know if you want to get that much heat in Puerto Rico. Speaking of Puerto Rico, this could be the main event. Uh, I don't know, but uh, we'll have it as a semi main event here. We've got Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest in a San Juan street fight. Uh I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I do think that we're going to see eight to ten people getting involved in here between everyone in the LWO, everyone in um, uh, everyone in Judgment Day. There's rumors of other Puerto Rican artists getting involved in this as well. Uh, yeah. It's ki- is kind of crazy. I would love to see maybe some other Latin representation, maybe another reggae hip hop artists like Maluma getting involved. That would be hilarious. Um, but I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I think this match is going to be crazy. I think Damian Priest has shown that he can carry Bad Bunny um, to a stellar show. And yeah. I think this and that was Damian Priest when he was more green to almost three years ago. And now we've yeah. got an, a, a veteran Damian Priest that I think is going to carry Bad Bunny um, to arguably, aside from maybe Logan Paul's recent performance against Seth Rollins, but Potentially the greatest celebrity performance w- within the squared circle. What do you think? Okay. Up until Logan Paul came in, you you had Bad Bunny down as the greatest celebrity performance when he was at WrestleMania in that tag match. Um, I I agree tenfold that we are going to get a lot of shenanigans it's a street fight which means anything goes i love the fact that the crowd's going to be able to be involved i just don't know how much we want them involved but it's going to be uh it's going to be a ruckus ruckus uh event for this match uh damian priest Uh, being the veteran that he is and bad bunny being able to put on the performance that he can i really think it's going to balance out any naysayers that are going to have issues with this match having a celebrity go against a a veteran uh but really i'm looking forward to this through and through i think bad bunny does go over because i'd be terrified to be in puerto rico (laughs) um but yeah i i think bad bunny's gonna go over in this and i think it's gonna be a really fun and entertaining match yeah i mean he's the poster uh child of this entire premium live event i have a really tough time seeing him lose here but i also don't see him winning clean by himself in any capacity um so i do have bad bunny winning here i do think that this could be the match of the night i think this could just be a tremendous amount of fun i think this could be um Johnny Knoxville versus um, versus Sami Zayn levels of fun, but with competent talent. Yes. We, so because uh, Bad Bunny, 30 billion times, 30 light years ahead of uh, where Johnny Knoxville is in the ring. So I think this can be fun, exciting and good at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And here's where this could also be the main event. I don't know what's going to be main eventing this. Um, I could very well see the two Puerto Rican guys main eventing in Puerto Rico, or we could see uh, the the top babyface and the top heel in the company going against each other in Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. No stipulation, nothing, just straight up one-on-one match. Um, I, I guess I'll take this first. I was saying that I'm seeing a lot of... Um, similarities between this Cody Rhodes and 2012 John Cena in that John Cena also lost to a very powerful Samoan at WrestleMania 28. Brock Lesnar comes out, beats the crap out of John Cena. They set up a match at the following pay-per-view. Brock Lesnar absolutely decimates John Cena only for Cena to win at the very end. I could very well see this going that way. I could also very well see this going SummerSlam way where Brock Lesnar ate John Cena alive and John Cena got no offense in. I could also see that happening to Cody Rhodes while I could also see a more... um, 
traditional little guy versus Brock Lesnar match, a la yeah, the classic that was AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar, or Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar, because we've seen Brock Lesnar be able to work with guys the size of Cody Rhodes and put on damn near when most people would consider five star matches. But, you know, because the wrestler sneezed, Dave Meltzer's like, oh, that's half a star off. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go with the first i'm gonna go with the first where cody rhodes wins but he gets his ab ass absolutely mauled for most of this fight yeah i'm gonna go with the absolute same thing there uh, i hope brock lesnar is willing to do business the right way seeing the value in cody um but i'm looking at triple h here and triple h is known for his nostalgia booking he'll re he'll bring up his like past storylines and make them relevant nowadays um we've seen that time and time again since he's taken over i think it's 2012 cena um you know he's gonna get cody's in for he's gonna be sore on monday i'll tell you that yeah there's a but, receipt coming his way too oh, oh I, I don't i wouldn't want to be cody <laughs> i wouldn't want to be cody i cody gets busted open in this in yeah. this fight I will say that Cody does get busted open in this fight. Thank God there is some form of U.S. medical because he's going to need it. Yeah, but yeah. There's Cody, yeah. There's two people in the in the history of the WWE that you don't want uh, you don't want them to owe you a receipt, right? Brock Lesnar is one of them, and the other one is the Undertaker. Uh, the, the, and unfortunately for Cody Rhodes, after what happened on Monday Night Raw, a straight right hand uh, clip Brock Lesnar right in the nose, made him bleed, probably hurt like a bitch. But um, I think I think it's going to be much worse <laughs> what Cody's going to get back in some sure capacity. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, I think this is going to be a really great match. I I, I Go on, go on. Yeah, so long as they give them 20 plus minutes, Lesnar's mm -hmm. not used to doing that amount of time anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But every time he gets in the ring with a guy the size of of Cody Rhodes, like a Lesnar, like a, excuse me, like a uh, Brian, like a Styles, he always does. Uh, Seth Rollins is another good example. He always yeah. does the, the 15, 20 minute matches that are just spectacular because there's just something about like Lesnar is this giant imposing guy, but he can move like those guys. He can like you look at what he did with Roman at SummerSlam, and even though Rom Roman's a bit bigger of a guy, that Roman match he it was all over twenty minutes. Lesnar showed that he still had the conditioning to go. It was entertaining as all hell. Um, so I think when Lesnar is told that we need you to push yourself and really be there for the company, seeing that Cody is the guy that they're trying to really push as the biggest baby face. Lesnar's there to do business like at the end of the day. And he knows he knows the business well enough and he's pretty much the best veteran in the locker room at the moment. So yeah, I, I think uh this is going to be one hell of an entertaining uh match. So we'll see. Anyways, Matt Riddle and the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the bloodline being represented by the Usos and Solo Sokoa. Uh, I'll let you run with this one since I, since I ran with Brock and Cody. Yeah, so this one I'm looking, Santi, it's still too early in the rain for, I think, Kevin Owens and Sammy to drop the titles and or sorry they're not going to drop the titles but I think they cannot be made to look weak in this match especially with Riddle just returning they said Riddle's going to have one of the hardest returns because of everything that he had to go through they want him to really prove himself so I think this match is going to be like a coming out party for this trio um, but on the other side we are starting to see the cracks and the crumble and the walls starting to fall down in the bloodline and I feel there's going to be a whole lot of dissension between between the three brothers during this match because Solo's out to do a job for Roman right now and the Usos are trying to get back on the Tribal Chief's good side. Um, right now, we've been seeing this like separation between the brothers. Solo listening to Paul a lot more and the direction of the Tribal Chief. The Usos just trying to like get some form of contact. Like, the Tribal Chief has not even contacted them in the last couple of weeks. So you're looking at this match being a tale of two different stories, the match that is happening and the bloodlines storyline in its entirety becoming the focal point. So I have a feeling there's going to be a hell of a lot of dissension with the bloodline where it's actually going to be an easier win for uh, Sammy 
KO and Riddle because of some shenanigans between the three brothers. Mm -hmm. I've been calling it since before WrestleMania. The Bloodline Civil War is coming. Yeah, we it, we a lot of people. I thought that it was possible that Bloodline Civil War was going to start at WrestleMania. Roman losing, blah, 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 blah. It was potential for that to happen. Um, but I always thought that the best outcome was Roman winning and the Usos losing and causing dissension in the start of the Bloodline Civil War. And it's exactly what we're seeing uh, happen play out. Um, and, and I do think that we continue to dig towards that. I do think that it is uh, one of the Usos that causes them to lose here because they're on a losing streak and they can afford these losses because it makes sense storyline wise for them yep. to continue to lose, for them to continue to be on the bad side of Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa and the wise man. Um, it's got to be the Usos taking the loss here. If not taking the loss, then causing the loss in some capacity. Uh, but I do think that the one, the, the right storyline choice and two, the right Great booking choice in, in terms of uh, getting the other guys over as well is for the bloodline to lose here. Uh, alternate crazy scenarios that I'll throw out there. Bloodline is losing and then all of a sudden we hear Roman Reigns' music come in. He beats the crap out of everybody. He caught, he he helps the bloodline win, but there's he's pissed. I have to do everything for you. Yeah, this is just my fantasy booking. And, and I just love this idea of the of of the of, of the storyline, because th this is the end of Sammy and, and the bloodline, I think, like I just with the separation of brands. Um, yeah. So I think this storyline, this match is going to be more about the development of the bloodline storyline as opposed to you know, whatever is happening between all the competitors. I think that the good guys win here, Riddle and the tag champions win, but the focal point is going to be on what happens with the bloodline. What happens after this match with the bloodline? Is there going to be a post-match segment? Is there going to be a call from the anonymous raw general man? I mean, sorry, but uh, from, from your tribal chief Roman Reigns on Paul Heyman's iPhone three, who knows, right? I think this is going to be a storyline driven match as opposed to nothing but in ring work. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a good match overall, uh, but I think it's the story is going to be more about the bloodline than it is really going to be about the riddle and the tag champs. Right. All right. Have I missed anything? No, you're All good. Right. You can end it now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. Please make sure to leave a like on this video if you're if you're watching us here on YouTube. Leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, Steve, where can people find you? Guys, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Mr. Tesh on the road to 10,000 followers. And obviously over on TikTok, uh, Twitch, uh, TikTok at Mr. Tesh. Santi, what about yourself? Yeah, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash Santi Zap. You can also find me over on TikTok at Mr. Santi Zap. All of the links to that will be down below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. Take care and be good people.